Uh, my chapter 16, you're at Brown 17.4, 17.7. We're going to do a little review for uh, that says exam six, it's exam five. Let's see if I can, yeah, page it down. Okay, <clears throat> number five. Barium carbonate has a measured solubility of 4.03 times 10 to the minus fifth at 25 degrees, determine the KSP. Okay, so we need to understand what's meant by solubility, and what's meant by KSP. We also need to write barium carbonate. So barium is a, uh, an alkaline earth, that means it has a two plus charge. And then it's a, a, with carbonate, which is a two minus charge. So that's, that's the compound right there. <clears throat> and when it goes into solution, It makes, let's see, am I going to run off the board? No, okay, I got room. It's going to make barium ions and carbonate ions. Barely, just barely on. Let me move it a little bit. We can get away with that. There we go. Okay, so the KSP for this. Um, let's see, that's not strictly speaking true because this is not part of the KSP expression, just these two because they're both aqueous. This is actually a solid until we put it in solution. So that, that's why it's called solubility product. So we have the barium and we have carbonate, okay? Now solubility is in terms of, uh, usually if it doesn't give you units, they mean molarity. That is 4.03 times 10 to minus fifth moles per liter, okay? So that solubility means, um, if we take these two and run our ice table, then there's going to be none of that to begin with. And then we're going to we're going to take some of this. This is going to be minus x from here, and oh, excuse me, that doesn't have any meaning. Ice, the change is going to be minus one of these produces plus one of those and plus one of those, okay? So the only reason I put something over here <clears throat> is because um, this is the solubility. So the equilibrium position is gonna produce an X here and an X there. And X is the solubility. So KSP, is going to be, and I think in the, maybe even in, uh, hold on a second. I don't even give it a symbol. <laughs> the solubility then produces one of these, I think the textbook maybe used S's, S for solubility, so that you can draw a comparison between the solubility of that and the equilibrium concentration of this. But so what that means is it's solubility squared. So we just need 4.03 times 10 to the minus five squared. And that should be, um, KSP then would be uh, 1.62 times 10 to the minus nine. Okay, so that was a pretty simple one. We haven't got complex yet.
We should also be able to go backwards. Given the KSP, you should be able to calculate the solubility. And that we probably got one coming up. Okay. The correct mathematical expression for finding the molar solubility S of this one. Okay. Yeah, this is going to, this doesn't actually calculate it, but it uses, um, it asks you for the expression. So if you go number six, if you say this is what happens in solution. And two hydroxyls. Is it still on? Yeah, it's still catching it. Okay, now if one of these, um, but we start off with, we start off with, um, see, um, well, that doesn't matter there. Zero here and zero here. Then if we uh, say the solubility of that, how much of that molar goes into solution? Then what does it produce over here? Well, it produces one of these, but it produces two of those, right? So the, the, that means that this one is S and two S and the KSP would be S, like this one, and then this one squared. Okay. So if we reduce that, that's S squared times S is S cubed, and four squared, uh, two squared is four S cubed. So that's D. You're right. Yeah. Okay. That's six. And let's see. Let's see if I can make this work. Okay, number eleven. Which of the following compounds has the lowest solubility in molarity in water? Okay, first thing I would look at is, <clears throat> can we do a direct comparison of the KSPs? The only way that you can directly compare the KSPs is uh, if they produce the same number of ions in solution. So this produces three plus one is four, two plus one is three, two, no, we can't. We have to do, we have to calculate each one separately. Solubility then, if we look at it in terms of um, uh, whatever this happens to be, well, let's take the first one. Probably ought to do it over here. So what happens to this one is it produces three silvers plus one phosphate. Okay. So uh, if one of these goes into solution, it produces three of those. So if this is S, this is three S. And this is one S. So KSP then, is equal to uh, three S cubed times S, which is equal to uh, 27 S to the fourth. Okay, so you just solve for S. This is equal to that. So you divide this by 27 and take the fourth root of it, okay? Um, and for the next one, this would be 
Uh, I'm just going to do it this way. KSP is 110, which is this one. And two hydroxyls. So two hydroxyls would be that, but the coefficient is two. So that equals to um, 4s cubed. Okay, next one is actually S squared, because you got one and one. Calcium sulfate, same thing. S squared. And the last one is one aluminum and three hydroxyls. So it would be like this one, only this would be the aluminum over here, this would be the hydroxyls over here. So this one's going to be the same as the first one, 27S4. Okay, so now we have to calculate the solubility based on those relationships. All right, so 1.18, uh, 1 excuse me, exponent minus 18, divided by 27, and take the fourth root. So for mine, that's uh, this number to the one-fourth power. There we go. 1.6 times 10 to the minus five. That's equals S for the first one. The second one is 3, 10 to 27. Back up. 3, minus 27. And then I want to divide by 4. And then I want to take the third root. Uh, the third, one-third power, which is the same as the third root. So that's 0.333. I get 9.1 times 10 to the minus 10. And the next one is that value square root of this value. So that's an easy one. I should have been able to do this with my head. Next one, I uh, will have to put that one in the calculator. And then take the square root of that. 7.8 times 10 to the minus 3. And then the last one. So we've got 2 exponent minus 33. And then divide by 27. Take the fourth root. So I get 2.9 times 10 to the minus 9. So the question was, which one has the lowest solubility? Looks like the third one. See, cadmium sulfide has the lowest solubility. That one took some work. This is a review document, so that one point has no, it doesn't tell you how difficult it is. <laughs> A lot of busy work, really. You just do the same calculation. Once you set it up, find out what the expression is. All right, that was 11. Set this over here. And 13. Molar solubility of barium carbonate in 0 0.1 molar barium chloride solution is. Now we have the common ion effect. Uh, 
which influences the solubility. And in every case, if there's a common ion in solution already to the compound that you want to put in solution, it will reduce its solubility. So we've got um, barium carbonate again, just like before, barium and carbonate. Still there. Um, and we have um, initial change equilibrium. So, what's the initial concentration of barium? It's 0 0.10 molar. Carbonate is zero. Okay? So, we know that the, the equilibrium is going to go to the right because there's no carbonate in the solution yet. So we know that we're going to um, lose for every one of these, we're gonna end up with one of those and one of these. Okay. So the equilibrium is actually gonna be 0 0.1 molar plus S, and then this is S. So our KSP, 1.6 times 10 to the minus nine, is equal to this one times that one. Okay. Um, now, what is the side, what, what is gonna be the solubility? Is it gonna be a substantial part of point one or is it gonna be a lot, lot smaller? probably going to be very small. So we should be able to say that this is zero and approximate 0 0.1 times S. So if we uh, divide 1.6, now we just need to do some math. Right? We want to solve for S. So if we divide this one by 0.1, uh, that's all we have to do. We divide by 0.1, it's the same as multiplying by 10. So it's, it should give 1.6 times 10 to the minus 8. Oops, did I go the wrong direction? That's none of those. Okay. That's, that's not up there. So it did have, we did put this one in here. Because if you do your math wrong, Dividing by 0.1 is the same as multiplying by 10. So when you multiply this by 10, that makes it more positive, which means minus 8 instead of minus 10. That's what that was for. That's to catch somebody that did the math wrong. <clears throat> so this is the answer, but it's not one of the selections. And I didn't look to see how does that compare. Uh, was it 10 to the minus fifth before in, in pure water? I think it was. It's about 10 to the minus fifth. That was number five. Wasn't it? Yeah. No? 1.62 times 10 to the minus ninth. Oh, okay. It was 1.62 times 10 to the minus. Oh, oh, oh. I wrote. Did I write uh, solubility bearing carbonate with a KSP? Okay. Hold on a second. Oh, number five, we were actually calculating the KSP from solubility information. Yeah. Okay. So the problem is set up to say that the, uh, 
the solubility is 10 to the minus five. Yeah. Uh, in pure water, but the solubility in this molar barium chloride is 10 to the minus eight. So it's about three orders of magnitude worse soluble. All right. So 17, I'm gonna to have to scroll if I can get this thing to work. Oops, went too far. Seventeen. There we go. Which of the following solid salts is more soluble in one molar acid, hydrogen ion, than in pure water? <coughs> more soluble. Okay. So the environment is one molar hydrogen ions, and our choices are. Sodium chloride, calcium carbonate, potassium chloride, silver chloride, and potassium nitrate. Okay, when we try to solubilize something with acid, what condition favors that technique? Remember, we look at the anion. And if the anion is the uh, conjugate base of a weak acid, then it will latch on to that uh, proton and take it in, into solution. So this chloride is from hydrochloric acid. That's a strong acid, weak base. We need a strong base. And that, this is a strong base. Um, not that one, not that one, not that one. Those are derived from strong acids makes a weak base. So this carbonate will latch onto that hydrogen ion and take this into solution. Calcium carbonate will go into solution. So that's why the answer is B. Now, if you want to get, well, potassium chloride, potassium nitrate, sodium chloride, they're all infinitely soluble almost. So this is the only one that would give us pause. We can't get into the solution with acid, so we have to attack the cation now instead of the anion. And that's where the complex ion formation comes in. You can form a complex ion with this uh, silver ion, then you can bring it into solution. But if we had a, uh, if we have silver combined with a strong base, like phosphate, we bring that into solution with acid. Because phosphate comes from a weak acid and it makes a very strong base. So you add acid to it and you bring it into solution. 17, 19, okay. Testing my manual dexterity here. Here we go. 19. You have a solution consisting of 0.1 molar chloride, 0.1 molar chromate. You had 0.1 molar silver nitrate. Dropwise, given that the KSP for um, Ag2CrO4 uh, silver chromate is nine times 10 to the minus 12, and for silver chloride is 10 to the minus 10, which of the following will precipitate first? Okay. So here's our starting solution. We've got 0 0.1 molar chloride in solution. We also have 0 0.1 molar chromate in solution. Um, 0 0.1 molar silver nitrate is being titrated against those two. Uh, 
So this one is soluble. Silver nitrate is soluble. <clears throat> so which one's going to form first, the silver chromate or the silver chloride? If we look at the, uh, this just gives us the KSP. We need to know solubility. So if we look at silver chromate, yields two silvers and one chromate, then the expression for its KSP, which is nine times 10 to the minus 12, nine times 10 to the minus 12 equals, if this is, if this is S, then that's S, and this is 2S squared. So we have four S cubed. that needs to be resolved to find the solubility. So the solubility of chromate is nine minus 12 divided by four, and then take the third root. 1.3 times 10 minus four. So this S, uh, I'm gonna stick, yeah, I better put it down here. This S is 1.3 times 10 to the minus four. Silver chloride produces just silver and chloride. So this is S, this is S, and 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10, is equal to S squared, right? So we take the square root of 1.6 to minus 10, and that's 1. 1. 1.3 times 10 to the minus five. So S is 1.3 times 10 to the minus five. So which one is, is least soluble. That's the one that's going to precipitate first. 10 to minus 5, 10 to minus 4, silver chloride is less soluble. So it's this one. Nineteen. All right, just keep that in my pocket. I might need it again. Let's see, 21. How many moles of calcium nitrate must be added to one liter of 0.182 molar KF solution to begin precipitation of calcium fluoride? <clears throat> okay. Oh, I got a hint. <laughs> I must have known that this was going to uh, spin my head around if I didn't have it. So what we're looking for is uh, at what concentration of calcium ions does Q equal KSP? Now, why do we do that? Because we're looking for precipitation of calcium chloride. like that. <clears throat> and the um, KSP, or actually the calculation of Q, this is going to be, let's say we actually have some values here. How many moles of calcium nitrate? So, let's zoom, zoom, zoom. That's fluoride. So the calcium is one one with fluorine. Okay. <clears throat> we start off with 
uh, no calcium. We haven't added any calcium yet. That's the question. How much of that do we have to add? But we're starting off with 0 0.182 molar fluoride. Okay. Um, and the way it's worded makes it easier. How many moles per one liter? Which means molarity. That's so, we, so if we calculate the molarity uh, that we want for calcium, then that's our answer. Okay, what kind of change? We're gonna get change going this way because there's no calcium here. So if we, um, if we lose S on this side, we get one S on this side, and we get two S's on this side. Okay, so we only need these two. So now we got S here and we got 0 0.182 plus two S. Um, I wonder if I'm barking up the wrong tree. Our expression of KSP for this would be, oh, yeah, is um, 4 times 10 to the minus 11. No, I think I am barking up the wrong tree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm second guessing myself. I'm on the right track. So this is going to be uh, yes times. 0 0.182 plus 2, yes. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, hold on a second. No, it's weird. Right? That's S. Yeah, that has to be squared. Okay, now we're going to have to solve a quadratic, or can we say, can we say anything about that 2s? Solubility. Solubility for something with a k of that value should be very, very small. So I'm thinking that we can say s, actually, 0.182. So S just needs to be this one divided by 0.182. Two point two times ten to the minus ten. Oh, Scott, sorry. It's weird. Let's try that again. 0.182 squared. Okay, now divide that into this. Four exponent eleven. Now, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 9. Yes. 1.2 times 10 to the minus 9. There it is. <clears throat> and we can say this is molarity. But since it's in one liter, that's also the number of moles of uh, 
calcium. Simply because it's one to one. It's the wording that kind of throws you off, I think. I mean, it does me. And like I said before, that's the one of the purposes of word problems, and especially multiple choice word problems. They're meant to confuse. And they're very successful at it. 23, okay, I'm gonna have to roll. Go back down. There we go. So in a page next time, you know, up twenty four. Okay, twenty three. <clears throat> a solution is 0.1 molar in each of these. Uh, lead 2 nitrate, manganese 2 nitrate, zinc 2 nitrate. Solid sodium hydroxide is added until the pH of the solution is 8.5. Which of the following statements is true? Okay. Um, if, we're, if we were talking about solubility, we can compare directly these values because they all break up into the same number of ions. I have three ions here, three ions here, three ions here. So we can do a direct comparison for solubility there. Um, let's see. What's going to happen? Uh, pH of, we have 0 .1, 0 0.01 molar of each one. pH is 8.5. Okay. We know the pH, 8.5. What we need is the hydroxyl ion concentration because that's going to be in solution uh, when we're trying to put these. Well, uh, we're trying to say which one precipitates. So our first. Uh, task is to find out what's the hydroxyl ion concentration. Right. So POH would simply be 14 minus 8.5. Right. So that's 5.50 POH. And then OH concentration is going to be uh, 10 to the minus 5.5. Right. Good so far. So let's see what that concentration is. Uh, five point five there. And okay, so we know the concentration of hydroxyl. If we look at the um, what's going to happen in solution, we get two leads and uh, one lead and two hydroxyls. And um, the, if we look at the answers, that gives us a clue also, which one of these will precipitate. All right, so we need to look for um, this one going into solution will produce an S here and a 2S here. And the expression now is uh, KSP equals uh, S uh, squares, 2S squared. So it's going to be uh, 4S cubed. 4S cubed for each one of them. Oh, excuse me. No, it's not. My mistake. 
because we've got this in solution. So let's say we have a metal and a hydroxyl and two hydroxyls. There we go. That's our generic for each one. They, they're all behaving exactly the same way. So we've got our metal and we got our two hydroxyls. Each one is 0.01 molar initially. Um, we need to say Q. What is Q equal to? Because Q is based upon the initial amount, isn't it? Yeah, okay. And the Q then is going to be uh, 0.010. And then it's 9.9856 times 10 minus 14. 4. 10 times 10 minus 14 times 10 minus 13. There. If Q is 10 to the minus 13, 1 times 10 to the minus 13, what do we do? <clears throat> if Q is less than K, that means it doesn't have enough of these. And it wants to move this, right? Right, no precipitate. If Q is greater than K, you get a precipitate. Because if Q is greater than K, you got too much of this. You got too much uh, soluble ions. They're going to move back. Okay, so this one is Q is less than K. This one is Q is greater than K. This one is Q is greater than K. So we get precipitate here, we get precipitate there. Lead, lead and zinc over here. D. Del <laughs> Delusion. <clears throat> Sometimes it feels like, as a student, I guess you're on the back of a bucket rock as your instructor tries to figure things out. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the next one, 24. In the qualitative analysis scheme for metal ions, go back to the back, and I'm sure it's in the back. Here it is. So how's group two? Okay, there's group one, there's group two, acid-insoluble sulfide. So in acidic solution, you add hydrogen sulfide. In acidic solution, you add hydrogen sulfide in acidic solution, forming insoluble metal sulfides. There it is. The first step was uh, add hydrochloric acid. And group one is separated as insoluble chlorides. Then you add, they're all already acidic, then you add the hydrogen sulfide, which makes the sulfur concentration much, much lower. Uh, yeah, makes it lower, which will take out those very, very insoluble sulfides. And then you uh, add base, that picks up the hydrogen ions and releases more sulfide, it picks up the other sulfides plus some hydroxides. So that's the, the next group after this one, group three. And group four, we pick up as carbonates. So you add sodium carbonate, you pick up the group four, and then the group five are still in solution. And um, you deal with your mixtures then. Okay, 25. Which of the following solid salts should be more soluble in one molar ammonia than in water? Okay. So our choices are sodium carbonate, 
potassium chloride, silver bromide, and potassium nitrate. And then he is none of these. Okay, we're going to add ammonia. One normal, uh, one molar. One molar ammonia. All right, we're, we're trying to form a complex ion. Right? So you look at the cations. Right? Sodium doesn't form a, a complex ion with ammonia. Potassium doesn't form one. Silver is the only one that does. <clears throat> Let's see. Go. Twenty seven. The correct mathematical expression for finding molar solubility of lead to chloride is right, lead. Oops, that's the lady. Sorry. Lead. Two chloride makes there we go. All right, so uh, if this, if we lose one of those, we get one of these and two of those. So that means the KST. is equal to this one and this one squared, which is 4s cubed. So it should be that one right there. That's kind of going backwards. Easy ones toward the end. Uh, 30. Which of the following leads to the formation of a precipitate? Oh, okay. If the Q, if we're going from this one over here to that, to that, uh, and this is a solid. So if the Q, the actual concentrations of these two um, in the expression is greater than K. That means you got too much of that. So too much of that means it's going back to solid. So when Q is greater than K, you get a precipitate. And it's this one. Right here. Let's see, 34. Calculate the solubility of silver chromate in a 0.049 molar silver nitrate solution. Okay, we've done one of these before, but we'll do one again. And that's going to give us two silvers and one chromate. Okay, uh, initial concentrations, 0 0.049 silver nitrate. Nitrate is a spectator. Silver is 0 0.049 molar. And this one's zero. Okay, the change then is gonna be, if we lose one of those, we get two of these and one of these. So at equilibrium, we have uh, 2s plus 0 0.049 and s. So KSP is 9 times 10 to the minus 12. And it's this one. Squared. Times this one. Okay. 
This one is, is going to be less. We know that S solubility is going to be less than it is in pure water. And it's, it's pretty low even in pure water. So we can approximate this one as 0 0.049 squared times S equals that one. So now what we need to do is square that value, 0 0.049, and then divide it into this value, 9 exponents minus 12. Okay, so the molar solubility in that environment is 3.7 times 10 minus 9. Right there. Okay. All right. Thirty six. Let's see. I have to come here and scroll a little bit. Oops. What if I get? Both on. There we go. Got them both. Okay, 36. How many moles of calcium fluoride will dissolve in three liters of 0 0.089 molar sodium fluoride solution? Okay, so we're trying to dissolve calcium fluoride. And we're starting off with 0 0.089 sodium as a spectator, 0 0.089 molar fluoride. Zero point oh eight nine molar fluoride. This one's zero. So if we lose some of this, we get one of these. And we get two of these. Okay. Uh, that means we have uh, S here, and we have 0 0.089 molar plus 2S, and 4, point, 4 times 10 to the minus 11 is the KSP. The reason I'm going for solubility first is because if I know the molar concentration of calcium that goes into solution, then it's just times three liters because uh, molarity is moles per liter times three liters. That gives me the answer. Uh, okay, so this is going to have that one to this one to first power, and this one. 0.89 plus 2s to the second power. But it's very, very low solubility, which means we can drop that one out. So s and 0 0.089 squared. Now I just need to square this, divide it into that, and that's my molar solubility. So we'll be halfway there. 0.089, square it, divide that into 4 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay, so S is equal to 5 times 10 minus 9 which is molar, so times three, gives us 1.5 times 10 to the minus eight. 1.5 times 10 to the minus eight. So I, I multiply this one times three, and that's moles. Here it is. 
right here. Okay. And true to form, this answer is given there. That's incomplete. <laughs> Let's see if anybody's paying attention. All right, 37. What's the best way to ensure complete precipitation of 10 to sulfide from a saturated H2S solution? H2S solution. The best way for complete precipitation. Okay. For complete precipitation, we need as much of this as possible. I, so how do we do that? Well, you um, couple a reaction like that, that makes water, because this is a very, very strong base. And that by uh, making the solution strongly basic, we pull out all of these and shift the reaction this direction, makes a lot of this. That's how you, that's how you make enough of that to precipitate all the tin sulfide. So we need add a strong base. Okay. OH minus is a very, very strong base. Okay, let's see. All right, barely made it. Uh, is, that, is that part of the problem? That's the question for is that for the question? Oh, yeah, because it's A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so 40 stands by itself. Let me see. Scroll a little bit. Ooh, can I get a more point? Barely. Uh, the concentration, this is 40. The concentration of magnesium 2 plus at seawater is 0 0.052 molar. So the concentration uh, of magnesium 2 plus at seawater is 0 0.052 molar. At what pH will 99% of the magnesium be precipitated as hydroxide? And so we got. This is our, our uh, controlling reaction. These are things to get down here. There. Uh, two plus plus OH minus two of those. Okay, um, and we're given KSP here. We want 99% of the magnesium. So if this is our starting concentration, we want 99% of that out. So what's 99% of 0 0.025? 0 0.99, 0 0.05. Two, I said two five. That's my dyslexia. Point oh five two there and point nine nine eight times. So we got five point one four eight times ten minus two. I was on track with this at the beginning. <clears throat> We're going back this direction. So. If we want uh, KSP 
to equal this one, which would be 5.148 times 10 to the minus 2. And then this one, um, OH squared. All right. Hmm, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. And this KST is uh, 8.9 times 10 to the minus 12. Okay, now tell us what the hydroxyl ion concentration is uh, that will be consumed to precipitate this into that. There he is. Sorry. Okay, so what I need to do now is divide this by that and take the square root of it. Okay. Oops, I did something wrong. Let me try that again. Yeah. And then take the square root of this number. Okay, so the OH concentration needs to be. 1.3, 1 times 10 to minus 5. Question is, what pH? So this is OH. Uh, we got two choices. I like doing POH first. Um, negative log of that. So let's take the log of that one. So it's 4.88. Then pH is equal to 14 minus 4.9.1. There we go. There. We go. Right. Mm -hmm. Two significant figures, I, I've kept a bunch up here, but two means two decimal places. So it's 9.12. Right. There. I was making it more complicated than it needed to be. That was 40. Uh, 41. A solution contains 0.018 mole each of iodine, iodide bromide chloride. When the solution is mixed with 200 milliliters of 0.24 molar silver nitrate, how much silver chloride precipitates out? This is a sequential precipitation. So which one's gonna go first? Notice that all of these produce two ions each. So we can we know what order the precipitation occurs. The least soluble is this one. It goes first. And then anything left over, any silver left over works on this one. Any silver left over works on that one. So we've got to go stepwise through these. And um, we don't need to use these values for anything but telling us the order of precipitation. So we got 0 0.01 moles each of these. We're starting off with 200 milliliters of 0 0.24 molar silver nitrate. 
Okay. So, um, unless I have to convert to liters, I just say 200 times 0.24 will give me millimoles. Uh, 200 times 0.24 is 48. So we've got 48 millimoles of silver. Okay. How many millimoles of iodide do we have? 0.018 moles. I guess I will have to make more uh, moles. How do I do that? One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Um, 0.018 moles. Yep, we're going to use it all up. Use up all of the iodide. Leaves us with 0 0.03 moles. And this is for the iodide. And this one is for the uh, bromide. Okay. So that's two, that's one, right? And then for the chloride, well, that's what's left. This is for the chloride. So 0 0.012 moles of, of chloride um, in 200 milliliters, right? How much? Oh, it says grams. Okay. So we got 0 0.012 moles of chloride, which means 0 0.012 moles of silver. Or actually silver chloride. I should do that. Silver chloride. Because they're one to one. For every one of these, you get one silver chloride. So 0 0.012 moles of silver chloride, and we have to convert this. Let's see if I'm still on camera, just barely. So 0 0.012 moles of silver chloride, we need to convert to grams. So silver is 107. 87, 107.87 for silver, and then chloride, I know that one already, 35.45. So it's 143.32 grams per mole times 0.012. So I get 1.7 grams of silver chloride right there. Okay. It's still raining out. Oh, uh, whenever I'm up again, I'm on the way here. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's see. 43. When a mixture contains containing cations of analytical group one through three is treated with H2S in acidic solution, which cations are expected to precipitate? Okay, uh, look at your thing. The, the group ones are precipitated with chloride, hydrochloric acid. Right. And then after that, you add H2S and that precipitates group two. Well, actually, no, they're right. Treated with H2S and acidic solution, that'll get both one and two. Right. The acidic part, well, actually, that could be construed as, as wrong. H2S in HCl acidic solution will get one and two. But there's there's no other choice in here, so that's the best answer. You just have to assume that it's chloride, hydrochloric, uh, hydrochloric acid. Let's see. I'm gonna have to scroll that one. Let's see. Did I go too far? No. 
there. Okay, uh, 46. Here we go. I hope we're getting toward the end because I don't want to run over into our lab time. Um, the cation M2 plus, so this is just generic, reacts with ammonia to form a series of complex ions as follows. Okay, so it picks up one and makes this one, which is heavily weighted toward the product. Then it takes this one and adds another ammonia weighted toward the product. And this one picks up another one. So it's got three ammonias and each one is driven to the right. So it essentially ends up here. Uh, a one times 10 to the minus third mole sample of the metal nitrate is added to one liter of 15 molar ammonia. Choose the dominant species in this solution. <laughs> okay, this is blue smoke. The dominant species is going to be that one because 100, 1,000, 100. Right? If we say this times this times this would get us the K for the entire, you know, the composite K. So uh, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. 10 to the 12 takes us down to here. So that would be, uh, let's see, which one is that? Right here. There it is. Yeah, for a second, I thought I was going to have to do a calculation. But it just gives you a bunch of extraneous information. Oh, uh, here we go again. I guess I should be thankful that he does this. I just haven't got used to it. I see 47. What is the concentration of nickel 2 plus ion in a 0.045 molar nickel nitrate solution? That is also one molar ammonia. And the KF for the complex ion is 5.5 times 10 to the 8. Okay. Starting off with 0 0.045 molar nickel, nickel 2 nitrate. Okay. The formation constant, uh, the reaction for that is uh, nickel 2 plus plus. Uh, Ammonia. And there are six of them. Right? And that makes nickel, ammonia, and it has a two plus charge. Like that. Still on camera. Yep. Okay, <clears throat> so this is an equal. This approach is two steps. You don't get the equilibrium until you've done the stoichiometry. The stoichiometry says there is uh, 0 0.045 initially. This is uh, beginning and this is ending. 0 0.45 here, one molar there, and nothing here. If all of this reacts, right, then you're going to have nothing here, and you're going to have one 0 0.045, let's see, six to one. So six times that, one minus six times 0 0.045. 
Because with each one of these, you're going to pick up six of those. Um, and then over here, you're going to get 0 0.045 because you're changing all of this over here. Okay. I forgot to do the stoichiometry first. So this one is 0.045 times 6 subtracted from 1. 0 0.73. Okay. So this one, this is zero. There, there, there. Now we can do um, equilibrium. Now our starting position is that change that. And this is 0 0.045. Okay. Now, since we've got none of this left, it's going to shift back this way. So if, we, if we're going to get one of these, we have to lose one of those because they're one to one. And um, we're going to get plus six of these. Right? Because for every one of these, you get six of those added back. Okay, now the equilibrium expression. This is X. This is six X plus 0 0.73. And this is uh, 0 0.045 minus X. Now we can do the equilibrium. 5.5 times 10 to the 8 equals this one, 0.045 minus x. And then the denominator, we have, uh, that's, yeah, that's right. The denominator, we have this one, and we have 6, or let me write it this way, 0. 7.30 plus 6x to the 6th power. I think I did that right. Huh? Oh, yeah. Is that the welders doing that? Uh, yeah, we're making the assumption. We're making the assumption that X is very small. So we're gonna we're only gonna lose a little bit of it to go back that way, simply because this is huge. It's very huge, which means not much of it is going that direction. It's mostly over here. So the, the X is going to be very small, and we can say that. 0 0.045 over x times 0 0.73 to the sixth power. Now we can solve for x. Okay, um, let's see. Let's put x over on that side and bring 5.5 .5 times 10 to the eighth over here. Um, and actually, first I want to do 0 0.73 to the sixth power. There we go. And then multiply it by 5.5 .5, 10 to the eighth power. And then 0 0.045 divide this product that I got into that value. So I get 5.4 times 10 to the minus 10. 5.4, 10. There we go. And that, does that answer the question? Uh, what's the concentration of nickel? Yep, X is nickel concentration. Whew. 
I think I'd have to study a little bit to take my own test. Yeah. I'd study a lot, actually. Okay. 4750. Right here. This is a big test. A big test. There it is. Um, let me see. Uh, the KF for the complex ion, which is the one we're working with today, is 1.7 times 10 to the 7th. That's accepted value. We're going to find out. We're going to calculate our own value compared to that. Uh, the KSP for silver chloride is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Calculate the molar solubility of silver chloride in one molar among it. Okay. KSP for silver chloride. Calculate the molar solubility. Okay. So if we form the if we form a complex ion like this, there we go, and our starting concentration is, okay, we do need that one, but we also need this one. What we need is to combine these two equations. Because if, if I don't have a, uh, a combined equation, then I can't do an ice table. What's so, the one that talked about? yeah. So if I combine these two, and the, uh, the, the K for this one is KF is 1.7, 1 1.7 times 10 to the seventh for that one. And this one is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Then if I combine these two, I get silver, ammonia, silver chloride, and then I get the complex ion, which is going to fly off the edge of the board here. And then silver and chloride. And then the combined here is uh, equilibrium constant times equilibrium constant. So this one times this one is the is the, is the K EQ for that reaction. Two point seven two times ten minus three. Okay. Um, molar solubility. All right. Um, Actually, we don't need this one or that one. So we're going to have what's our starting condition here? One molar, one molar there, and this one is going to be zero, and that one's going to be. 
we're going to shift this way. We're going to lose one of these, right? We need to make um, this value equal to our solubility. So that means we lose two of these. That way, one, if we solve it for S, we have our answer. And this is going to produce, <clears throat> this is going to produce uh, one of those for each one of these. Okay. So this has one minus two S. This has minus S. Well, that doesn't matter because it's solid. It doesn't enter in. And then we, oh, on this side we have S. Okay. What about the chlorine? Uh, oh, chlorine, yeah, you're right. Um, sorry. This one is uh, plus S, and this one's plus S for chlorine. Okay. So now we have uh, S here and S here. And our expression then for KEQ is KEQ is 2.72 times 10 to the minus 3 equals the complex ion times chlorine. Let's see, one and one, yep. And then on this side, we have just the ammonia. Okay. NH3 squared because of that, pre that uh, coefficient. Okay, now we can plug in. The value for this one is S, the value for the Chloride is S, and the value for this one is one minus two S squared. Okay, now we have to decide. Oh, no, we don't. Look what we got. This is S squared over one minus two S squared. So that's the same thing as saying uh, S divided by one minus two S, the whole thing, squared, okay? Agreed? <laughs> Are you still figuring it out? If this is squared and that's squared, then same thing as that divided by that, the whole thing squared. And that's equal to this value. So, um, two point seven two times 10 minus three. So we just need to take the square root of both sides first. Uh, I still got 2.72 times 10 to the minus 3 in my calculator. Take the square root of it. So I'm going to have to move up here. 5.22 times 10 to the minus 2 equals S over 1 minus 2S. So if I multiply this times that, I get 5.22 times 10 to the minus 2 minus 5.22 times 10 to the minus 2. Uh, actually, 2 times that. Right? 1 times that and then minus 2s times that. Right, so 522 two, two. times 2. There we go. Uh, 1.04 times 10 to the minus 1. S equals S. So this 
10 to the minus 2 equals uh, that one plus this one. So I get actually 1.104. Yes. Okay, so far. And then S is this one divided by that. Let's see. So I get S equals 4.7 times 10 to the minus 2. That's the molar solubility of uh, silver chloride. Yeah. That's the molar solubility of silver chloride in this situation right here. <clears throat> that was a lot of work. Spread all over the place. Now, are we getting close? 